So before we jump into the craziness that is this episode, I have to just say, I don't care if Big Titty Elf Mommy is, you know what, turns out to not be that great of a character, or if it's a misunderstanding with that cliffhanger of an action end. But here's the thing, if someone like that says, hey, you can call me mother, you just go with it. That's just me anyway. But horny pants aside, holy shit, this episode of Reincarnated as a Sword absolutely blew me away. Now, I knew for a fact Fran wasn't going to get killed. I figured she might end up getting a little wounded, like that's always a possibility. And we know damn well she's someone who is completely fine with killing those that she deems to be kill worthy, right? Like it's not something that should be too much of a surprise. But I think it's the way they presented the kill in this episode that really makes me so happy and makes me praise this isekai even more than I already do. Now Fran's not the isekai character. Fran is a character who was completely born into this world and as far as we know, this is the only world she'll ever know. And as for our sword dad, that is the isekai, right? He is someone with his own morals, his own ways of trying to teach Fran how to be a good person for basically growing up in this world. And in this episode, he basically admits that he can't put his own morals, his own ideals that he's grown up with himself onto a girl who is a part of a race that is so discriminated against that there's literally these cats that go out of their way to simply hunt them almost for sport and to hurt them, to prey on them. And the only way for someone like her to be able to show her people and to potentially evolve is to kill the people responsible for doing it. The fact that she shows no remorse, she feels no guilt for cutting this fool up. It's something that makes you happy because it literally is the difference between an isekai, a fantasy show, where we never kill. We always take the moral high ground against people who, without a second glance, would try to kill you if you turn their backs to them after giving them that chance at a second chance. Instead, Fran lives up to it. She feels petrified building up to it. She feels like a little girl who feels like her world's about to shatter. And the realistic snap into that rage, that kind of ferocious energy, was completely on point. And I think there's no excusing this cat, this fat noble bastard. Like, both of them deserved death, in my opinion. Understandably, one didn't end up getting killed because of the status and everything, but in terms of a species and a person that admits to, I stop counting after 10 and is so happy about how it cuts off an ear, cuts off a leg, it dies halfway through, and talking about children, right? There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That is a character who deserved the most painful of death. And I don't think it makes Fran an evil person. It makes Fran someone who's about to change the way her people are seen in this world. And I think it's such a brilliant way that in literally like six minutes of this episode, it felt like we're watching it for 15. Not in the way that it felt dragged out, but just there was so much happening. There was so much emotion. There was such beautiful directing and the fact in literally a fourth of the episode they were able to convey that much emotion and that much holy shit you don't see this enough in these anime series it just makes me praise the show all the more and then to see the aftermath of everything you know i really like the guild master i have to admit i think it's funny that he tries his best to be nice with fran and also trying to use fran in ways that obviously will benefit her but benefit the guild guild starts making up rumors that apparently he just likes little girls so that's why she got her promotion so he has to prove to everyone that no she actually is just that talented <laughs> she comes in just bargaining up a storm it's just great Great. Amanda, this big titty mommy elf, she's probably going to be a mixed bag depending on, you know, preferences, both obviously the kink, but also just the stalker personality. I love it myself. People always like to make the argument of like, oh, if it was an ugly character, like say that fat noble, people would have a different opinion. Well, of course they would. There's stuff I would do to hot people and I wouldn't do to ugly people. It's just natural that you would have a different feeling, of course. But I love the fact that she feels like overbearing mother character, but they like reinforce that like she's literally chosen by God. So her intents are generally pure when it comes to these kids. But just to see Fran and how just she wasn't having any of the bullshit, she'd go to buy cotton candy, she'd be the one handing it to her. She'd go to have a bath, she'd be chilling there, and she just explodes it with a fiery blast. I love the fact that they had fun with it, and they let Fran just have a no-shits attitude as they casually reveal anyone who stares at her for longer than three seconds has a chance of getting killed. You see that in the general, like, waiting area where you pick up the quest, you see the person, right? You know, it's just very much she is feared among these adventures for being the ace of the guild. And then here's Fran just deadpan looking at her saying, bitch, please stop stalking me. And you can't help but love Fran all the more. And the fact that within the five gems that they ended up getting, we see our sword get a bunch of new skills. 
they already are teasing like, oh, they might be able to summon a familiar or a spirit or something. So there's a lot of cool possibilities with that. But I love how in the middle of just like talking about their next adventure, Fran's eating her curry, she has ice cream, and then you still have Sword Dad being best dad saying, don't talk with your mouth full. Like within an episode where he allowed her to kill someone, he still feels like a perfect father for a girl growing up in this world. Different morals, different beliefs, there's a different system at play. It's not just like, oh, people can get punished in... A way that allows you not to get your hands dirty like this is a world where it's kill or be killed and Fran did the right thing as Sword Dad ends up believing and he constantly is growing it's not just like he tells her not to do something and she rebels and she fails like sometimes he says you need to retreat and she agrees with that other times she says no other people will die and he realizes that had she not done that, a lot of people would have been killed. There's constantly a learning with both of them where they both have each other's best interests at heart and sometimes he knows completely what to do and other times she knows what to do or she just feels like that's the right option. And the way that it truly feels like a father-daughter story where both are learning and respect each other along the way, you can't help but love it. Obviously, we end with Amanda, you know, fighting her, whether that's a misunderstanding, just testing the skill to see are you really up to the challenge. Maybe she doubts, like, okay, you're clearly hiding something, it's something to do with the sword, that could be the potential, I don't know. Or maybe she's just an evil psycho bitch, that could be it too. But I can't help but say, I love the character. I thought she was entertaining as hell, and I love the interactions and the deadpan expressions from Fran as she just was having none of her bullshit. And I think for that reason alone, I hope she gets to stick around longer and their interactions can continue. Because this big elf mommy just, she knows how to make an entertaining scene pop and with a character like Fran and Sensei here, it's just always going to be a banger. I just love the fact that we're, this is now episode 8, right? We're two-thirds of the way through this first season and truly, we've seen more progression in character development between Fran, now Sensei, Teacher, Sword, you know what? I wouldn't necessarily say there's character development there because he's mostly that mentor role, but the way he bounces off of Fran, you can argue it's kind of like one whole character development with both of them combined. And to see the level of progression, the mechanics at play with this world and its almost video game mechanic system, right? Everything about it, we've seen more in eight episodes than I've seen in a lot of these types of shows that have had 24 episodes. Like, it goes to show how fleshed out this world is and why it'd be such a damn shame if this only ever did get one season. But honestly, even if it was only one season, I could still leave saying it's still one of the best father-daughter stories I've seen, similar to Somali and the Forest Spirit, which is another banger that's an incomplete story, but it's hard not to still recommend that show so hard because of its open-ended, beautiful nature. And maybe we'll have something similar with Reincarnated as a Sword, but if it's Isekai, it usually gets at least two seasons, so, you know, fingers crossed sort of a thing. But either way, I leave another episode very impressed. I loved everything about it, from the brutal to the horny, everything in between. It was a great, great episode. But thoughts and feelings yourself down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. You can consider supporting the Patreon. We got a bunch of fun things going from live reactions to even video shadow. It's like if you were getting right now. We got a loon, Calvin Atkinson, and Diedrich Savant. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.